Tonight, how to fight back against online harassment. Apple rumors from a reliable source. And Netflix is pleased with net neutrality. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 288 for Thursday, March 5th, 2015. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com, the online learning platform with over 3,000 on-demand video courses to help you strengthen your business, technology, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash TN2. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash T-N-2. I'm Megan Maroney. Let's get to some tech news. This week, game developers are descending on San Francisco to convene with the like-minded and get the latest announcements on updated games. Rock Band 4, anyone? We've seen some virtual reality that might not make you throw up and the latest streaming game services. Last night, we talked to Alex Wilhelm from TechCrunch about how this year it seemed like there was a general recognition that online harassment problem, the online harassment problem in gaming is still big and that violent trolls will not be tolerated. Matt Weinberger from Business Insider was at the event. He's still at the event, as we can hear, and he wrote about a new task force designed to help stem the tide of abuse and harassment. Welcome, Matt. Hi, thanks for having me. So your story is about Zoe Quinn, one of the key figures in Gamergate. Give us a short background on Quinn. Uh, so Zoe Quinn is a game developer. She made Depression Quest, a couple of other really, really well-regarded independent video games. Um, being a, being a woman and in game development, she already had to deal with her own fair share of harassment on Twitter, on email, you name it, which all kind of came to a head last year when an ex-boyfriend released many, many, many personal details about her and her love life to the internet, uh, causing a tremendous backlash, which led to what we now know as Gamergate, which says it's a consumer boycott, but is actually more like a harassment campaign against women in game development. Right. So now Quinn gave a presentation at the conference uh, about online harassment, how to move past it. Uh, tell us a little bit about what she talked about. So instead of going over her story again, which, as she said, has been gone over many, many times by many members of the media, including myself, uh, she chose to focus on what to do when you have been targeted for harassment. Uh, a lot of it stems around taking care of yourself first, around taking a deep breath, um, keeping specific evidence, logging specific evidence, making sure to keep the police in the loop. It's stuff that seems common sense, but when you're actually getting phone calls at five in the morning or your parents are, as in, as in Zoe Quinn's case, um, that's a hard thing to think rationally all the way through. Right. So her advice mostly stemmed around how to keep a level head and that freaking out is actually okay a little bit as long as you're taking care of yourself. Right, so take a deep breath and download your Twitter feed and uh, keep it in a safe place. So That's exactly right. So, I mean, there's a real difference between, I mean, just someone being criticized and then just, vi I mean, it, you have to cross a line. I mean, when, when people cross a line being violent or threatening, that's when, that's the information that you should save, right? Yeah, oh, absolutely. I, I, especially when it comes to things like specific threats. Um, the common argument against, against telling the police has always been, oh, who takes those things seriously after all? But if there's a credible threat, as in the case of Brianna Wu, who is another game developer targeted by Gamergate and, and for harassment, uh, someone formed a Twitter feed called something along the lines of death to Brianna with her home address and, and very specific threats about how she was going to break in through the back door that she always leaves open or whatever. And yeah. So tell us about Crash Override Task Force, the, the, the task force that she's starting. So uh, Zoe Quinn and her partner started this as a, they call it a task force. It's not quite a nonprofit, I guess. But uh, the idea is that it's a resource for people who have been singled out for harassment because you don't always know what to do. Uh, so it's a resource to operators who are standing by to walk you through it. Um, it seems like a really good thing because, again, no one really knows what to do. So they walk you through, again, what may seem obvious in retrospect, but at the time is not what's going through your head. Right. So she talks a little bit about what to do afterwards and also what to do before, like good password and, you know, safety and uh, yeah, how to keep factor authentication. Right. Uh, yeah. So you also talk about uh, an, the good game auto blocker. What's that? Yes. So Randy Harper, um, she has been around the scene for a while. She built a tool. She says it's like 10 lines of Perl script that has gotten her into more trouble than anything else. Um, 
all it does is block anyone who's made a collaborative text file of P of trolls on Twitter. The problem, it comes up with some false, false positives because it's really super, super crazy simple. All it does is look at people who are prominent in the Gamergate movement and just automatically block all of their followers along those lines, which means that once in a while, as they're so fond of pointing out, uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken is on that list. <laughs> Uh, that so it's not it's not perfect, but it's made Twitter a much more livable place for a whole lot of people. Right. A better blocking tool than what Twitter has themselves. That's exactly right. And along those lines. So um, so Randy Harper actually announced yesterday the online abuse prevention initiative, which is her new nonprofit in conjunction with Zoe Quinn and Crash Override to sort of handle all this stuff from the back end to provide advice and support theoretically for the Twitters and Facebooks and Instagrams of the world for how to stem this at the infrastructure level. Right. So, I mean, Twitter has been doing something this week. Uh, last week, they talked about they, they require phone numbers from people to get their account back if they've been accused of harassment. And uh, I think a few days ago, they said, someone pointed out that if you use the anonymous web browser Tor, uh, you have to provide a phone number to have a Twitter account. Do you think any of these things will work? I think I'm the wrong person to ask. I think that... Uh, anyone, ask, ask Zoe Quinn, ask Randy Harper, ask anyone who's gotten death threats over Twitter, I think that they would say that it's just not enough, uh, that Twitter needs to take a much harder line stance against it. Uh, something I heard over and over at that panel yesterday was zero tolerance, uh, because all it takes is setting up a sock puppet account. It's the simplest thing in the world, and in an age of Google Voice and people having landlines and cell phones and whatever, it's so easy to set up additional accounts. Right. And, you know, this week we also heard of the, the former pitcher, Kurt Schilling. He was fighting back against trolls and some of them actually got fired from their jobs and kicked out of school. I mean, was that something that the average person, maybe you're not the right person to ask this question. Yeah. But I'll ask it anyway. <laughs> is this, do you have any idea if this is the right, is this something anyone could do? Or was he able to do that because he's famous? I think generally speaking, it's because he's famous. Uh, I think that we'd, in general, we'd all like to see more consequences for making people's lives miserable online. Uh I think this is a really extreme case because he is famous, but I think that the better solution is to find ways to prevent them from harassing in the first place, to not even let it get to that point. Well, Matt, thank you so much for covering this, and thank you for coming on to explain it to us. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your conference. Matt Weinberger is a reporter at Business Insider. Is there anything else you're working on that you can tell us about? Um, I am at GDC. I just saw a game being played by a swing that rocks back and forth so an Ellie can feed a robot. So I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Matt. <laughs> thank you. And right down the street from the Game Developer Conference, they're already putting up banners for Apple's big Spring Forward event at the Moscone Center on Monday. Here to talk to us about that, what might or might happen at this event, <laughs> is the definitive source on Apple Rumors, Mark Gurman from 9to5Mac. Thank you, Mark, for coming on. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. So let's start with what you don't think will happen on Monday. You say Apple's new streaming service based on Beats will not be revealed at the event on Monday. Right. The new streaming service won't be unveiled until June 8th, which is the first day of the WWC keynote. It's their annual developers conference. So the current plan is to, uh, to talk about it back then in June. They originally wanted it to launch around March, but they're having some internal troubles. So mm -hmm. June's the new target. And you still think it'll be about seven ninety nine a month? Yeah, we're told seven ninety nine is going to be the high end, so that's going to be the highest it'd be priced at. It's possible they fall down to as low as five, but the latest talks with the record labels pegs it at just under eight dollars, which is still two dollars a month cheaper than the current ten dollars a month price plan. Right. And do we think it'll? Do you think it'll be integrated into iTunes? I mean, what will make it better about than the current service? Right, so it's going to be integrated right into the music app that comes on every iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch. It'll be integrated into the Apple TV as an app, and it will be integrated into iTunes on the Mac. So it's going to be everywhere, Apple. Well, interesting. So now everyone knows you have the most reliable Mac sources. Um, this morning we talked about a Wall Street Journal story pointing to plans for a larger iPad that's designed for work. Uh, what yeah. do you know about that? Yeah, so it's happening. Um, last time I was told about it, it was still like in early prototype stages, which is basically what the Wall Street Journal is saying because the design has not been finalized. They're talking about the possibility of USB ports like on the Microsoft Surface, talking about the possibility of a keyboard and mouse-driven operating system. I particularly don't think the mouse thing is true, but in terms of like a keyboard attachment that integrates with the smart cover, 
I think that's highly, highly likely given the surface has it and it's become a really popular element of that marketing approach for the surface. And how big do you think it will be? Uh, it's just over 12 inches, which is, um, I mean, on paper, three inches bigger than the current iPad doesn't sound too much bigger, but it's on the diagonal. So it's going to be considerably larger. It's going to be very close to the size of a MacBook Air or MacBook Pro 13 inch screen. Interesting. So now we also heard that Apple has a patent that implies they're working on some sort of waterproof iPhone. Uh, what do you make of this? Right. So Apple patents things all the time. Uh, maybe less than 5% of things that are covered uh, in terms of patents actually make their way into the marketplace. But this is basically the research and development process. So you can see that they're not standing still here. They're thinking about all sorts of things, including waterproof iPhones. It's to be seen if uh, they feel the benefits of that uh, outweigh the cons that come with it. Maybe that means the phone has to be thicker, but they're not going to come out with a waterproof phone until uh, they can add that feature without taking away from their from their guidelines of how thin and light the phone should be. Right. Well, it would be interesting because you know Samsung had the waterproof phone, and then they just announced the S six, which is not waterproof. So right. it would be interesting if they right. were just chasing each other around this waterproof issue. Uh, right. Yeah. So the Office 2016 preview for Mac was released in beta. Have you had a chance to try that? Yeah, I played with it a bit this morning. It's uh, I think the UI is very nice. They took away a lot of the clutter that earlier versions of Office had. So it's easier to navigate around the toolbars and such. Um, also seems a bit faster, even though it's still a beta. So I think overall it's going to be a really nice update, especially now that it's integrated into all the cloud stuff, and they'll probably sell it at a ch cheaper price because... Uh, it's not going to come on a disc or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So should be a good update for a lot of people. Yeah. So earlier this week, you released uh, some some papers that had information for Apple employees on how to sell the Apple Watch. I talked to Jason right. Snell about it. Um, he said that when he read it, it sort of disappointed him. He was, you know, he was sad that Apple was was being so, you know, very specific and they, they know exactly what they want to ask people when they come in. Um, do you ever worry when you release this sort of thing that you're ruining the magic for some people of what's behind the curtain? Um... <laughs> It's a topic I don't like talking about, but uh, no, I'm not <laughs> really worried about it. Um, it's my job to report on Apple, and I think we do it in a very nice way. I think we lay out all the facts. We weigh the pros and cons, and uh, I think that we're you know just getting the information out there, and we're presenting it in a very fair way. Right. I mean, it's it's Apple's stuff you're just presenting, and I was you know I wasn't saying that you, everyone appreciates you, Mark, and the rumors that you give us, and we oh, always trust your sources. All good. All good. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it, it's, it is interesting because you're not, you know, your typical Mac fanboy. You just give the facts and uh, we appreciate it. So I always yeah, love yeah. to have you come on. That's an important topic. We really, we, we don't consider ourselves cheerleaders for Apple or anything like that. We really try to present the truth without any positive or negative spin on it. We, uh, we take it for what it is. Well, thank you again. And uh, we look forward to hearing all of the rumors come true on Monday that you've given us. So thank you so much. I hope so. <laughs> all right. Have a good night. You too. Thanks. And coming up, Google wants to sell you car insurance, and I want you to invest in the shrimp cloud. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. lynda.com is for problem solvers, for the curious, for people who want to make things happen. Maybe you want to master Final Cut, improve your memory, build a website, or sharpen your business skills. Lynda.com has everything you need to feed your curious mind. Some of the courses I recommend are Excel Power Shortcuts, Writing a Marketing Plan, and Pixel Playground, a weekly series where Bert Monroy gives you 10-minute self-contained projects that test your skills and challenge your imagination. There are also lots of courses with instructions on how to raise money through Kickstarter, at the end of the show, I'll show you a Kickstarter campaign that I know will want make you want to start your own. So you can check that out at lynda.com. With a lynda.com membership, you can stream thousands of video courses on demand and learn on your own schedule. You can even download tutorials and watch them on the go, including access on your iOS and your Android devices. Your lynda.com membership gives you unlimited access to training on hundreds of topics, all for one flat rate. So whether you're looking to become an expert, you're passionate about a hobby, or you just want to learn something new, I want you to visit lynda.com slash TN2 and sign up for your free 10-day trial. 
That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash T-N-2. And we thank them for their support. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. It's official. Google can now be your car insurance agent. Google Compare for auto insurance launched today after nearly a year of anticipation by the highly regulated insurance industry. What this really is is just a comparison shopping site, like a lot of comparison shopping that Google already has. They're already operating a site like this for insurance in the UK and have been doing so for the last two years. Google will monetize the new site through commissions from insurance sales, but some are suspecting that this is mostly about data that they could later use for self-driving car technology. Ellen Powell took the stand today in her discrimination trial against tech investment firm Kleiner Perkins. Pau, now the interim CEO at Reddit, is accusing the firm of passing her over for promotions because of her gender. According to several journalists in the courtroom today, it appeared that not just Kleiner Perkins, but the entire culture of Silicon Valley was on trial. At one point, a chief executive said they wanted Yahoo's CEO Marissa Mayer on the board because she was, quote, really hot. Another said that Pau had a female chip on her shoulder. I'm just checking for the chip. It's not there. Here's an update to a story we reported this morning. Yesterday, the CFO of Netflix said they were not pleased about how the vote for net neutrality went down. Netflix was one of the biggest backers and lobbyers for net neutrality, that the vote that won last week. So we were a little confused. This afternoon, Netflix spokeswoman Anne Marie Sequeo issued this statement. Netflix supports the FCC's action last week to adopt Title II and ensuring customers get the internet they paid for without interference by ISPs. There has been zero change in our very well-documented position in support of strong net neutrality rules. And finally, a story that I'm going to have to work very hard to tell you without laughing. After covering some pretty heavy topics today, I decided to turn to Kickstarter and see if there were any campaigns for new waterproof drones or robots that could fit in the palm of your hand. And there were, but instead, I wanted to show you something even more interesting it's called The Shrimp Cloud by Eric Dennis. And uh, here it is. If you want to invest, you only have five days left to do it. No person should ever endure. And I believe everyone should have access to millions of shrimp. That's why I'm creating The Shrimp Cloud. The Shrimp Cloud is a terabyte of shrimp that you can access anytime, anywhere, on any device, from any dungeon that has access to internet. That's over two million shrimp right in your pocket. Show your commitment to the future of shrimp by supporting the Shrimp Cloud. And if you still want more shrimp, you can also more shrimp. watch a shrimp movie, <laughs> listen to the shrimp album, read the shrimp book, wear the shrimp shirt, and so much more when you help support the Shrimp Cloud. I want shrimp that shrimp Cloud. shirt. I really want that shrimp shirt. This is, of course, not a real thing, even though it has earned $1,349 of its $100 goal. And this is why I love the Internet. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write to us at TN2 at twit.tv. Watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. If you have news for me, do you have your own shrimp cloud? Email me at megan at twit.tv. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I will be hosting for one more day while Mike Elgin is out of town. And then Mike will be back on Monday. I am Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.